In this video, we're at the last step in our app. We need to download the images. So we already have all the URLs, but we've got to be able to download that. We're going to use an excellent library in order to make that happen. And then we need to make it if someone taps on one of the photos that we can get that to show up in the Safari web browser. So let's go ahead and dive in. We're going to focus on downloading our images and getting them to show up in our app and also making it so that if a user wants to select a particular image, they can go see where that tweet came from. So uh, to get started, we have to download these images. And since we're using CocoaPods, we can find a great repository to help us download these images and even do some caching, which is really going to help our app. So let's go ahead and open up our browser. I'm going to go to CocoaPods.org. And the project that I love is SD Web Image. There's lots of different projects out there in order to save and cache images, download images, whatnot. I really like SD Web Image. So up to you about which one that you'd like to choose. But I'm going to go with SD Web Image and go for version 4.3. So please do the same so that we're matching up there. I'm going to go back to my project, to my pod file. Go ahead and paste that in. So now we have two pods here. As soon as you add a new pod, you need to save your pod file. We'll always close out of my project, then open up my terminal. I'm going to get to my project, capital TweetGram. There we go. And I'm going to do my pod install. Oh, you got to spell it correctly. There we go, pod install. Great. Now that's going and grabbing SD web image. And it's put it now as part of the project. So once that's in there, we can go back to Xcode and we can open up TweetGram. We'll now have access to this SD web image. So you might be wondering, well, what does this SD web image do? And basically you can just give it UI image view and say, you know, you have a particular URL of something and you want it to download it and it will go do it for you. It's really great. In fact, you can kind of just see an example here, image view dot set SD underscore set image. So pretty awesome that that's how simple it is. So first we need to import SD web image. So let's go do that. I'll copy that. Come back to the project here. This is inside of our collection view. We want to do it when we're loading up a collection view. So let's scroll to our collection view code. So right now in that cell, oh, I forgot it. Right now we're just importing SD web image. All right, so we'll do that, but then down here in the cell, rather than just making the background color blue, this is where we want to actually go and set the image. So we're going to still take this tweet image view rather than messing with the background color. First, let's go ahead and get the particular URL and, and convert it to a URL from a string. So let's do capital URL, and we are going to go do the initializer where it takes a string, and we want to pass it images url and go get the object at index path dot row great so we'll go ahead and just do a little if let here because i believe that gives us back a url optional let's confirm there if we give it a string yep that's the case so we're going to do an if let url be equal to this and we'll do our opening little curly bracket and end it there so if we're able to get this URL, then what we're going to do is refer back to our documentation. We want to do SD underscore set image. So we'll do our SD underscore set. And we're not getting the autocomplete. Let's go ahead and try building this project. Sometimes it can take a moment to implement the new stuff in there. So L dot SD underscore, there we go. Now we're getting all the good stuff. And we want to do a set image. And we've got a couple of options here. Let's go ahead and see what they look like. This one looks good. Look, it takes a URL object. It can even take a URL optional. So if we didn't want to run this whole if let, in fact, maybe let's just go ahead and do that. That'll save us a little bit of code here if it's going to accept an optional anyways. So we'll do cell, and let's go ahead and pass it that URL. And then with the completion block, you could put something in here. I'm just going to go ahead and hit Nell. We don't need to do anything after that's all finished. So let's go ahead and do a build here. Make sure that Xcode's happy with everything. It looks good. So let's go ahead and give this a run and see what this looks like. If we can successfully get this to work, then we'll you know, focus on getting 
our images to show up. And I just realized I started this on an iPhone 8 Plus. We want just the iPhone 8. So we'll go ahead and run that because we've already got that iPhone 8 ready to rock and roll. And for me, the Plus, it, it takes a little bit too many resources on my computer. And if the screen's too big, I like running the 8. So here comes the app. And it looks like, oh, we're getting a bit of an error here. Let's see, index out of range. Oh, that's because we have just set an arbitrary amount of collection views, right? So instead, we need this to be images, URLs, dot count. Okay, got to remember to replace the example code or else we're going to run into issues like that. So here it comes, and we will log in here, authorize the app. Let's go ahead and open that up. And now that we've done that, a bit of disappointment here. And I'm just realizing the reason, the problem that we're having here is that we go about getting all these, you know, images right from the API, everything. And right now we're printing them. But instead, what we need to do is tell the collection view that it needs to reload its data. So we need to tell it, hey, you know, there's new sources of information. So you need to go be aware of that. So add this collection view dot reload data after you've processed all the JSON information. So come back. Let's do our login. Authorize the app here. Yes, please open this up. And here comes the app. And we're not seeing anything. You'll notice we can scroll through, but we're not seeing any images. So we cannot start load of a task since it does not conform to ATS policy. So the issue that we're having here is that we're trying to download images that are not HTTPS. And so question is, well, how can we go about fixing that? Well, if we go down to our file here where we're going and getting like the media URL and the expanded URL, we can actually fix this by getting one step further here. You can get the HTTPS version of the media files. So let's go ahead and do that. Media underscore URL underscore HTTPS. We'll go ahead and run this one more time. You know, bit by bit, we're going to get there and it's going to be a good moment when we finally get these images to load up. So let's go authorize the app. Open that back up. And this time, whoa, look at that. We have some images showing up. How cool is that? So this is really great that we got these images to show up. But in order for this to kind of be complete, there's a couple of things that we want to focus on. So one, you can see there's kind of some weird stretching with some of the images, right, to make them all fit inside. I think we should do away with that. And also we need to make it that if we select one of these, it should go ahead and open up the tweet so that the user can see that. So image stretching, this is a quick fix for us. We've just got to, in our cell code here, we need to work on that image view. We're going to say cell dot tweet image view dot content mode. And we're going to set this equal to a dot. And there's lots of different options that we can choose here. We can do like the scale to fit, scale to fill. And I like scale aspect fill because basically what this does is it says I'm not going to, you know, change the scale of anything, make it some weird constraints, but I'm, I'm also going to fill up the whole box. And so this will be dropping off part of the image, but that will hopefully entice our user to go click on one of the images to see them in more detail. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put that there. The next thing is that if someone wants to go see what's at a particular tweet looks like, Let's go ahead and set the code for when someone wants one of these. So let's go ahead and type out collection view here. We want the did select item at. And make sure you don't did deselect. We want did select. A lot of people make this mistake. You want the did select. Okay, so this code's going to be run whenever someone taps on one of these tweets and we want to go pull up the information. So kind of just like before, we want to be able to pull up a URL. So let's go ahead and copy this code. The difference here is that rather than pulling up the images URL, we want the tweets URL. Then once we have that URL, it's going to be opening up the tweet in Safari. So we're going to say UI application dot shared. And then on this, we want to do a open. And this is where we pass in a URL. And you can do like some handlers and stuff like that. But look, it's looking for an actual URL, not an optional. So we are going to have to do an iflet here where we can go ahead and put this inside of curly brackets. Okay, so then we'll pass in our URL object. 
for the options, just go ahead and leave an empty dictionary there. And for the completion handler, we're going to put nil. We just are saying, hey, you know, we just want this thing open. So with these two new changes, let's go ahead and hit run here. Let's see. Oh, if it's an empty dictionary, I've got to have my colon there. There we go. Okay, big moment here. This should be really good looking images and it should open up to the correct location. So we'll go ahead and hit login. We'll now authorize our app. Okay, this will open us up. And look at that, we no longer have the stretching, right? These two guys, they put out great content, by the way, on Swift. You know, didn't stretch them at all. And let's go and see if we can go look at their particular tweet. So if we go ahead and click on this, look at that. It opened up Safari, and it's showing us, right, like they had a video here, and now it's ready to rock and roll with that video. So that's pretty cool. Now, really, just the last thing that's left here is we want to make it so that we can log out and essentially reset everything so that someone can come back and log in, right? Because if we go back to Tweetgram here, right, like let's say I wanted to log in with a different user or something like that. Well, you know, we would want to go ahead and do that. So let's make a little bit of a change to our code so that when someone does log in, let's go find our login function. So login tab, let's go say the first thing that we want to do is we want to take that login button and change it. So we're going to say login button dot set title. Okay. And we are going to change. Let's see, we've got our, there we go. Login button dot. And it's not letting me set the title here. Maybe I'll just have to do it. I'm thinking of a UI button. This is a bar button item. That's the difference there. So we're going to set the title to be equal to log out. Because we're using the same button for logging in and logging out, we actually need to do an if statement around the title. And so we're going to copy this and do a little if statement that says if this log out button dot title is equal to log out like we have here, then that means that they are trying to, you know, log out and so this is you know where we're going to do our log out code and then the else situation is that they are trying to log in right and so this is where we would have our login code right so if somebody is logging in that's when we want to change the button to this and if they are logging out that's when we want to change it to log in now if they are doing a login that's where we want them to do all the code that's down here so i'm going to take this bottom curly bracket and actually cut and paste it down past all of this information to kind of update the indentation and everything. I'm going to do Command-A to select everything and then hit Control-I. That'll sort of tab everything over for me. Great, that's looking a lot better. Awesome. And then far as the logout code goes, we need to change the button to back to say login. But the other thing that we need to do is we need to get rid of our arrays and update the collection view. So we're going to take both our images URL and we're going to set that equal to an empty array. Same thing with the tweet URLs. Let's go ahead and set that equal to an empty array. And then we're going to take our collection view and say, hey, you need to go reload your data. So let's go ahead and give this a test and see if this is it. If this works, this is a completed app for us. So go ahead and see this. All right, it's opening up fine. We'll go log in. And you can see, just for a second there, it said log out. So it should be saying that when we come back. I want this to open up Tweetgram. Boom, we're here. It's showing all of our images. You can still go, you know, tap on something, right? That's pretty cool. I noticed one of my tweet images had come up here. I tweeted this guy after some March Madness game. And look at that. That shows up. That's pretty awesome. So that all looks good. And now let's say I want to log out. Boom. Look, everything disappears and I can go back and log in. And it's going to take me through the exact same process. Okay. So we have a completed app here. A few things to talk about, but we'll go ahead and talk about them here in the outro. So let's go ahead and talk about what we have learned in this section. We did cover a whole lot. So first, creating a collection view for the photos. You can see how I can create collection views and have those images downloaded into the custom cells that we created. Awesome stuff there. Next, we had that fully functional login and log out process at the end there. We added a little bit of polish to make that look great. We used SD web image in order to download and display those images back to the user. And we took advantage of caching, which is really great. Just means that, you know, if a user already downloads that image and they see that URL again, 
It won't re-download, it will just use the same URL. And finally, we learned how to open tweets in the appropriate way.